I want to talk it over with Martin family attorney Jasmine Rand. Jasmine, how do you think the prosecution ha has done so far? I've talked to a lot of analysts, former prosecutors, defense attorneys, who, who think that they are having a tough time uh, proving second-degree murder at this point. I think the prosecution has done exceptionally well in this case. From the very beginning, they told us that they were going to show us Zimmerman's tangled web of lies. And that's exactly what we're seeing unfold before us now. Detective Serena was a very strong witness for the case, and he started to unfold some of Zimmerman's inconsistencies. I, I don't know anybody, though, who thinks that Detective Serena was a strong witness for the prosecution. Just about everybody who's been discussing this case, certainly on my program and elsewhere, has said that they have never seen a police officer testify so favorably for the defense. A police officer has been called by the prosecution. I think what we also have to remember is that Detective Serena, whether or not this information gets to the jury, it's important for the American people to know. Detective Serena himself recommended manslaughter charges for George Zimmerman. What does that tell you? That tells me that there were a lot of inconsistencies in George Zimmerman's story and that he did not find George Zimmerman's version of what happened credible. And we've heard him say that today. And we also have to remember that we can't consider Detective Serino's uh, statement and testimony in a vacuum. We have to compare it with what we hear the other witnesses say to really uncover George Zimmerman's inconsistencies. But the fact that Detective Serino himself did not think uh, uh, that, that a second-degree murder charge was warranted, doesn't that also tell you that given his look at the evidence, he actually thought that, that and as he's testified on the stand, uh, that Zimmerman was pretty credible in the things he said, that his story actually held up? No, not at all, because as Detective Serino said, he was also in kind of the initial stages of, of his investigation, and Bernie Della Ronda pointed out today that Detective Serino had not considered all of the evidence that the Jacksonville State Attorney's Office has now considered. Trayvon Martin's parents obviously have been in the court every day. They've sometimes been quite emotional during the trial. How are they doing at this mm -hmm. point? I mean, are, are, are they confident with, with the prosecution's case thus far? They're confident with the prosecution's case. It has been very an emotionally toiling time for them. I think to have to hear their son crying for help repeatedly, I think that's a different kind of pain, hearing your child scream for help and not being able to do anything to help him. I, I just want to go back to the two police officers' testimony. There, there was a lot of talk yesterday, uh, even some suggestion that perhaps th their testimony, because it was, in, in a lot of people's opinions, not clearly not yours, but so favorable to the defense, that this was some sort of payback almost for... Uh, for, for difficulties that between the, the law enforcement and, and the prosecution? You know, I didn't perceive it that way. I think that's all pure speculation. And I think that we are going to see the prosecution bring this tangled web of uh, lies home during the closing. But, but you talk about a tangled web of lies, but, but that's not what the police themselves were saying, the police who investigated this. I mean, in, in, in cross-examination by Mark O'Mara, it seemed pretty clear that, that the police officers felt like George Zimmerman's statements basically held up. There were a few minor inconsistencies coming out. Of, he said that Trayvon Martin came out of the bushes, location of Trayvon Martin's hands, et cetera. Um, but overall, the police seemed relatively satisfied with, 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 with what George Zimmerman had told them time and time again. I think that these were not minor inconsistencies. Some of the big inconsistencies we've heard were George Zimmerman claiming that he was so severely injured that he had to pull out a gun and kill Trayvon, and that's certainly not what we heard from Detective Serino. Detective Serino said he didn't believe George Zimmerman was punched 25 to 30 times. We heard the medical examiner say today that George Zimmerman's injuries are not consistent with someone who's been punched even over a dozen times, that it's more consistent with someone that was punched only once and at maximum had his head hit on the concrete one time as well. So I think that these, all of these witnesses are bringing into play Zimmerman's inconsistencies. Uh, Jasmine Rand, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.